Hashtag, Hashtag we, we are, are movie, movie club. club. Hey there, welcome to the Jam on Camera. I did the toast is to Odd Thomas. This is a review for week 47 of Hashtag We Are Movie Club. This week's pick was mine. My love for this one is the boat axe. That's, that's so amazing. And just knowing the tiniest bit of animation theory that I know, I know that each one of those monsters just took forever and a day to do, uh, especially with the way they shift and getting like the individual arm to act as the things crawling along the ground. And oh my gosh, such beautiful work. Really was. Well, I hate it for this one. It's really like a non-content thing, but there's this thing when like heroes go around, they, they don't keep weapons they have or they don't pick up the weapons they need. He drops the baseball bat when I really don't think he should have, and he probably should have X'd that guy off um, if he didn't. I didn't remember seeing him checking the pulse. But grab the rifle, put the gun in your pants, whatever. You don't need to depend on four rounds from a gun you never chamber uh, <laughs> to, to be what saves you. You're not that good, and it's just a, it's just a thing that bothers me. The MVP for this, without a doubt, was Anton Yelchin. Dude's amazing. I want to see him in so many more things. I'm so happy that he managed to get into the Star Trek role as young Chekhov. But I did want to give an honorable mention to Addison Timlin, who plays Stormy, because I really wanted to give it to her because I think that she's a more important character to the overall story, but Odd is central to the, the plot and everything that's that's happening. The, so, causation. It, it's a very tricky situation when you get into one character that causes the other character to act a lot. Um, but she is a very independent character, or a character unto herself, let's say. And I think Addison Timlin did a really good job with it. I loved how they played off each other so much. But let's get on to the categories. Aesthetics. Oh my god, the boat acts alone were amazing. And they had some weird CG stuff in there too. Like, if you notice when he's in the kitchen, like all the stuff where he's chopping cucumbers, I don't know why he's chopping that many cucumbers at once, or like he was flipping the pancakes, uh, like that was CG stuff. You could tell that like they had put in stuff there for the pancakes to flip around. And it was very awkward, but it worked really well. But the, the, the boat acts being transparent like that. Um, and even the non-supernatural scenes, they really did a good job lighting things up. There's one scene towards the end that I thought was really, really powerful. It's just three people standing in a room, and then the way Odd is walking, and the way the camera's angled, uh, and the way he's walking, they, they definitely knew what they were doing when they set that scene up, because it was a really subtly powerful scene. But you see that throughout the entire movie, just spatial... Uh, wonders as the actors are interacting with each other and the scenes are set up and they they're just super good about maintaining that um there's a lot of audio exposition that's there so it helps you understand what's going on as well as entertains you because the dialogue is amazing in this i just watched clerks again recently and i was reminded very much of that where you have these these kind of like long existential conversations in everyday life and yeah that makes them a weird couple or whatever but fuck it let me hang out with these guys aesthetics gets a 90. character development so like i'm saying i'm really digging these characters odd and stormy are fantastic uh not only is odd like kind of an offbeat character but he's still kind of an amazing guy he's noble he's he's humble he's he's everything you could want in a decent hero and then he's got the great girl on his arm, Stormy, and Stormy's not just Odd's girlfriend, Stormy is her own character, she's independent, she doesn't do what he says, not necessarily to his disadvantage, she tells him to do as much as he tells her to do, they're a, they're a fair couple, and I really like that, I think Stormy is a character, more so, like, I just, I really loved her, I'm like, let me find that chick, um, that, that was wonderful, so we've got some really high quality characters, because even William Defoe's character is the, the caring father figure, the chief, um, he does an excellent job, uh, even his girlfriend, like, it's, she has such a little role in everything, but she's, she's there constantly, she has very powerful roles, she's just played very subtly, and I think that, that's amazing, um, <laughs> and the, the villains are a little incompetent, and Fungus Bob a little bit comically so, the other guys are kind of idiots, so we lose a lot there, and, Hey, but 
we drip, we get drip fed information on these guys, and it plays out really well. And I gotta say, I'm really happy about it. Character development gets a 90. Storyline. This is actually a pretty good story. We have a start. They shotgun a lot of the hero's journey out of the beginning of it, so we get to the maybe good part. So we don't have to deal with the first act necessarily. The the first two acts of this movie to me are really the second act of a larger story. Because uh, the first act of the overall hero's journey is shotgunned away. We don't care about it. We've got a dealing with the child molester killer in the beginning, which feeds into all that. So that's kind of the first act of the movie out of the way. Um, so that leads us into the meat of the of the event that's happening. So we really just have the two acts. Um, the act building up to like trying to figure out what's going on, and then we have the act dealing with it. And... Um, I think it's really well done. I, I do not like the idea of putting people in the refrigerator, but it works if it is an actual character um, that is to their own right, and then you kill them off. That To me, that's not putting them in the refrigerator. That's kill them off, uh, which is legit, as long as they were developed, not specifically to be put in the, in the refrigerator. Maybe, maybe that character was, but they did such a good job developing her uh, or him in the process that I I don't care. I think it works. And I want to see the sequel to this movie uh, so badly. Storyline gets a 90. Compulsion. This movie gets me. Not only does it have great action, great mystery, great acting, characters, uh, dialogue. It, it's got everything I want in a movie. Uh, it's, it's just great time. I it, it found myself distracted from... The different things I was trying to get done while I was watching it. Uh, I did not want to put the movie away. I didn't want it to be over. Uh, I welled up when I needed to, and I'm not ashamed to say that. There's some very touching scenes in this movie, along with some very disgusting and stupid ones, too. But, hey, I just had such a good time. Compulsion gets a 90. Now, if you total all that up, you get an average of 90. For my wrap-up review, i got to say I can't recommend this more. This is a fantastic movie, and then when we watched uh, John Dies at the End for RT screenplay, this is what it made me think of. I, I wanted to watch Odd Thomas again. I love this movie. I want more. Where's my trilogy for Odd Thomas? I, all the crazy, shitty movies we made, we break The Hobbit into three movies when it, it was barely two. Ah, come on. Do me a favor here. Hollywood. Well, once again, this was a review for Hashtag We Are Movie Club. This week's pick was mine. Next week's pick is Charlie's, and we are doing Blade. You know, that half-vampire Wesley Snipes character that got a trilogy of movies? Well, my Thomas trilogy. But that'll be a good time. Can't wait to do that one. That's all for me. Have a nice day. I am Cameron. Be sure to go check out all the fine folks that are involved in this video. Thanks for watching.